Magandang hapon, Malacanang Press Corps, and welcome sa ating press briefing ngayon, hapon, uh, Webes, August the 10th. Recently, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. announced the suspension of the Manila Bay Reclamation Projects, noting several issues, among them its impact on flooding of Metro Manila and other environmental concerns. And to give us more details about this, we have here today Department of Environmental and Natural Resources Secretary Maria Antonia Yulo Loizaga. Good afternoon, Secretary Loizaga. Good afternoon, Daphne, and thank you very much for this opportunity to again um, clarify some of these matters. Uh, I think that th maybe the best way to start is to reiterate that, as you may have heard in the sauna, this is an administration that understands the intersection between sustainable development, um, the environment, biodiversity, climate change, you know, and land use change, among others. And so uh, we're here at the point where the president has then issued the suspension of reclamation projects in Manila Bay, really to look into, um, number one, the environmental impacts, but also the social impacts of uh, these activities. And uh, on the part of the DNR, uh, we are, of course, as I have said before, looking into the compliances uh, under um, the conditions uh, under which uh, the, the ECCs and the area clearances were issued. So this is the role of the DNR. And uh, as I've said before, we have already started to look at the compliance issue. And um, we are continuing to do that. Uh, starting with, of course, the ongoing, but then we will look into all the projects uh, for compliance. Okay. Opening the floor to questions. Kathy Valente, Manila Times. Yes, ma'am, ah, good afternoon. Ma'am, Senator Cynthia Villar claimed that you are afraid of influential people behind the Manila Bay Reclamation Project. Uh, who are these uh, influential people and bakit Bakit ilag tayo or afraid tayo? Uh, so this is uh, Senator Villar's, I guess, statement of concern regarding this very complicated issue. Uh, and I'm very grateful for our interaction. No? So Senator Cynthia and I have been really conversing very deeply on this issue of reclamation and environmental impacts. Um, as you will see, and as I have uh, reiterated, our work regarding compliance and the re review started earlier this year when we, we started to meet with advocates, no, including Pamalakaya, including Agham. Uh, in that meeting, Oceana was there as well. They uh, came to, ha to represent a few other advocates. After that, we held two other multi-stakeholder fora to actually ventilate all these issues. Um, I'm very uh, grateful to Sec uh, Senator Villar for her concern, uh, but we are here to do our job and we will do it slowly but deliberately because we want to make sure that we stay within the bounds of the law. Pero ma'am, sino-sino po ito yung mga influential people na binabanggit? Meron po ba? At sinasabi niya rin ma'am, parang uh, there were no consultation daw po sa mga reclamation project at nagpirmahan lang ng mga contracts. Paano po nangyaring may permahan na bago po itong mga studies pa? Mga uh, violation, possible violation na... Yeah, thank you, Cathy. No? Nangyari po ito before I joined government, so I will not venture to say what happened then. Uh, ang role ng DNR dito is to stay within our mandate. We do have a mandate under the mandamus, which is to rehabilitate Manila Bay to the point where people can actually swim and fish. And that is an order we take very seriously. Hindi lang po ang DNR ang kasali doon. There are 13 other agencies aside from us na in order ng Supreme Court to rehabilitate the bay. Now, if we are to do what we have been obligated to do by the Supreme Court, we need to do the review of these projects. Nestor Corrales, Philippine Daily Inquirer. So, Secretary, you are not afraid of these influential people as claimed by Senator Villar? Well, uh, for those of, well, I don't know many of you, but you can ask the people who do know me. Uh, I, I'm not easily scared. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Ivan Mayrina, GMA7. Uh, Secretary, the President said that all except one uh, has been suspended. May we know which is this one that was allowed to proceed? Actually, upon clarification with the President, and as you will see on the suspension, 
uh, all are under review. So all are under review? Yes, sir. Okay. Under review, while they are under review, they are not allowed to proceed. But apparently, ma'am, the Philippine Proclamation Authority is saying that they don't have any communications from the Office of the President for them to impose the suspension. As we speak, uh, in effect, na po by suspension. I have a copy of the suspension, so I think that the PRA will also have a copy. So that's, as we speak, ma'am, in effect na to. As soon as the president speaks, I think that will be in effect. No, uh, and so he actually uh, declared this uh, over the uh, last couple of days, I think, when mm -hmm. he was in the Pampanga area for, for the Abulacan area for the, for the uh, flood yeah. uh, incident. And um, we now have a formal. Yeah. Yes, the reason I ask is as of yesterday, uh, reclamation activities were still ongoing in, in, in the bay. So there. Yes, so we just uh, have had something issued today. Thank you. Maricel Halili, TV5. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, hihingi lang po kami ng detalye tungkol dun sa suspension. How long will these uh, reclamation projects be suspended? Well, the, the issue really here is the cumulative impact assessment, and I've said this before to, to the group. No, um, The scientific team that we are actually engaging will be organized by this month, no? as I've shared with you. And uh, we intend to provide a program of work once they have all met together. Uh, hindi lang po ito simple because community impact assessment involves drivers, it involves feedbacks, no? um, and it involves many different disciplines. I have heard uh, some observations uh, noting that I have not mentioned social scientists. For those of, well, for those of the people who know me, know that I've been an advocate of transdisciplinary work, not inter, not multi, but transdisciplinary work. That means disciplines need to intersect, the results need to reflect the intersections between the disciplines. And when you say transdisciplinary work, we learn from communities, we learn from experts in practice, we don't just learn from scientists who are professors. And what's our target? We will know once the scientific team converges and the work program will be laid out. So again, this will include physical scientists, oceanographers, uh, as well as, of course, geologists. Uh, there will be climate scientists on board. There will be social scientists on board. Okay, Alexis Romero, Philippine Star. Secretary, just to clarify, you mentioned that all projects are under review. Is it accurate to say that all of these projects are suspended? The, the declaration is really that all of these projects are, under, are, are suspended at this point. No? So all are under review. We have to take our time, uh, really beginning with those that are ongoing, because they're in fact already impacting the areas. And then we will graduate to those that are, in fact, uh, still not yet begun. So we're talking about how many projects, Secretary? In, the, in this particular region, no, we're talking about roughly 22 projects. 22 projects. Thank you, Secretary. Sam Medanilia, Business Mirror. Um, good afternoon, ma'am. We will just like to clarify, prior to ma-announce ni President Marcos yung suspension, hindi pa suspended yung mga activities doon sa Manila Bay? Hindi po. Uh, so yung pag-announce, tsaka pa lang po nag-suspend? Yes po. And then, uh, they have been under review, but we don't have, the DNR does not have the authority to suspend. Okay. Kathy Valente again, Manila Times. Ma'am, may we know po kung sino po yung nag-approve ng mga reclamation project na to na under review? kung hindi po during the time of the President Marcos? At lahat po ito uh, had been previously approved under the PRA in the previous administration. Previous administration, ma'am, uh, anong administration? Pangulo po pala. At just the previous administration. So the Philippine PRA. Reclamation Authority under um, the previous administration, yes. Duterte, ma'am? Yes po. Okay po. Okay, Nestor Corrales, Philippine Daily Inquirer. Kathy, the mic, please. 
Ma'am, just your comment on the U.S. Embassy's uh, statement that um, they're raising concern about a Manila Bay reclamation project being undertaken by a Chinese construction company that was blacklisted uh, by Washington three years ago. Yes, our, our role in the DNR is to really focus on environmental compliance. No? Um, as you know, the proponents of the projects are the local government units, and they do have their own partners, etc. Uh, we are not in the. We are not actually able to comment on the choice of contractors or the activities that uh, may have gone on in order for them to engage these contractors. We are here to actually implement environmental laws. Okay, Alan Francisco, PTV Four. Hi, Sec. Sec, what is the long-term outcome or effect of this reclamation, please? Yes, as we know, any disruption in any natural ecosystem will alter its function. So, so when, you, when an ecosystem is actually uh, in place, it is, is in fact uh, in, a, in, a, in a state wherein it provides certain services, ecosystem services, such as, for example, the drainage of floodwaters, no? um, then uh, when that is disrupted by any kind of physical introduction, infrastructure, uh, digging up just for any purpose, there will be a disruption in the delivery of that service. I think what's important to know is certain sections of the Manila Bay region are at zero elevation. No? You say zero, and and po ang dagat. No? And some of them are actually subsiding. When we say subsiding, lumulubog po siya. No? And when you have the situation where you have extreme weather events, and we're looking at scenarios in the climate, uh, looking forward 10, 15, 20 years. No? When you have extreme weather events, what's important is the ecosystem service of drainage for flood management, for example, needs to be preserved and enhanced, especially because the city of Manila and other uh, cities around the bay have areas which are heavily populated, quite well developed, but almost at zero elevation. So. In terms of the long-term prospects, no, uh, we need to take into consideration climate change impacts on on the cities that are involved and the municipalities that are involved. We need to take into consideration the geological risk. As you know, uh, there has been uh, this many discussions on the big one. I mentioned the last time when I was here, I think, uh, hindi lang po ang big one sa West Valley Fault. May Manila Trench scenario rin ang FIVOX. Uh, at yon po ang, for me, uh, what needs to be taken into consideration in the long term, but also in the very medium term, because uh, we may in fact have an event that would would impact everything that is built around the Bay Region. Thank you. Pia Gutierrez, ABS-CBN. Well, if ever po itong impact assessment natin ng mga reclamation projects, uh, mag magpakita na it has negative effects sa uh, environment natin. Um, pwede po bang umabot yan na the government will also hold yung mga previous DNR officials who, um, who approved yung mga ECCs accountable? I, have, I cannot answer a speculative question <laughs> such as that. No? However, our job moving forward is to make sure that we are able to, with, with transparency, uh, assure compliance so that the sustainable development of this area is possible. Uh, that's a legal question and it's, it's speculative, yeah, so I won't venture there. Okay. Another question po, um, submitted lang na reporter namin. Uh, DOST Secretary Soludong said na, okay sana ang reclamation kung <coughs> island reclamation dahil nababawasan ng risk ng maling connection ng mga drainage sa mainland which could exacerbate the problem of flooding. Ganito rin po ba ang tingin ng DNR? There are many ways to do uh, reclamation correctly. And as you can see, Luneta, Intramuros, no, these are all re reclaimed areas. Uh, the, where the cultural center is, that is a reclaimed area. So I will not say categorically na mas mabuti yung island uh, because it really depends on the specific physical and social context ng area. But Secretary Solidum, of course, is the Secretary of Science and Technology, and we respect uh, his own inputs to this process. Okay, 
Sam Medanilia, Business Mirror. Microphone, Kathy. <laughs> hey, ma'am, ang uh, tatanong lang po namin, in case na after nung cumulative review ng DNR, may makita mga violations, will DNR shut down the operations or bibigyan lang sila ng time for corrective measures dun sa mga projects nila? There is, there is due process here, no? So they will be given, of course, uh, with a period within which they may be able to correct. However, uh, and the guidance as to what can be done or not done during that period, no? And uh, if they do not comply, it's possible for, of course, the ACCs uh, to be suspended. Or, yeah. Tuesday new DZBB. Hi, ma'am. Clarification lang po. Yung pinapakita niyo sa aming papel, ma'am, ay suspension order na po ba yan? And uh, uh, dated when? And na ibigay po ba yan? Na ibigay na ng kopya doon sa 22 reclamation projects? Um... I think you would have to wait for the official release, no? Um, however, uh, the 22 projects will be written to, some of them have already been written to, on the part of DNR, no? In terms of the compliance review. No? So, regardless of whether suspended sila or hindi, gagawin namin ang review for compliance, no? So, just to give you a little bit of background, when the ECCs and the area clearances were issued, uh, there were conditions attached to those ECCs and area, area clearances. So we're looking now at the actual compliance to those conditions, no? And uh, yun po ang medyo mabigat na trabaho because ang dami po niyan. And it involves multiple agencies giving their no objection or objection to uh, the different projects. Follow up lang, ma'am. Sa Senate inquiry po ay na-question ang Department of Public Works and Highways dahil uh, parang sinasabi ni Secretary Bonoan wala sila doon sa technical uh, group para doon sa reclamation project na yan. Uh, sabi niya, uh, binibigyan lang sila ng uh, paper para sabihin na kung approve sila or not doon sa project. Uh, Pwede ba yon na mag-say yes ka or no kung hindi naman pala sila kasama doon sa technical group? Actually, uh, there is a process by which the different departments are all given the opportunity to certify that they have objection or no objection. So, nandiyan dyan na yan. It's part of the process. Uh, not everyone will be part of the actual reclamation. Um, remember, these are local government-owned projects. And therefore, the local governments are now going to be, in, in collaboration with the PRA, implementing whatever approvals that they have. No? Uh, sa totoo lang, uh, in, in fact, uh, the DNR is not even a member of the monitoring teams no, of the projects. And we are hoping that we, in fact, can correct that situation. Any more? Jean Mangalus. Inquire.net. Hi, ma'am. Thank you. Um, can we just get a categorical answer that all reclam reclamation activities are under review and suspended? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, did the DNR give a recommendation to the president for him to suspend the reclamation activities? And what were what was this recommend? What were the what was the suggestion of the DNR? The, these, these issues on the environmental compliance have been in discussion for some time. As I said, the president has been aware of the economic as well as the environmental and social impacts of the reclamation projects. And therefore, I cannot uh, speak for him in what made him make that decision at this point. However, we provided what we have as far as the inputs from the DNR in terms of the need for the cumulative impact assessment. I should say this. The cumulative impact assessment is actually part of EO 74. And if you can look that up, that is a very critical EO. No? And it, it actually uh, mandates certain actions to be taken regarding the formulation of a national and regional reclamation policy. Uh, that is what we're also wanting to do. And we also would like to review the whole governance procedure over these types of decisions moving forward. 
I was actually going to ask a clarification on that. I took some notes. Um, given that the Manila Bay Reclamation Area impacts all of Metro Manila and not just the LGUs fronting it, um, I suppose it, it, that I was going to ask about the governance aspect yes. and what uh, what can we reform or moving forward, and what what do you think of um, how this was implemented? Could you, uh, my own personal opinion, uh, at this point, is that. The reclamation is a development issue, and it's an environmental issue that is related to development. And therefore, the decisions regarding uh, reclamation really should be part of a an overall economic and social and uh, environmental strategy to achieve the sustainable development goals. Uh, and so the procedures that we need to design then need to reflect uh, the performance of the country against those goals and against the Philippine Development Plan overall. Mm. Okay. okay. Any more questions? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. Okay. Thank you so much, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you, Secretary Loizaga. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Thank you.